And Dom's. Well, I gotta go out in the garage and work. I know you just want to cuddle. Well, I know. And are you comfortable? And are you asleep? Are you? And do you want some scritches? Do you? Do you want some chin scritches? There we go. I know. I know, Sleeping Beauty. I know you're fast asleep. You were. Okay, continue on with the Jeep. Got some things I want to work on. Uh, the cruise control switch. I did buy a new switch. But I have not determined if the switch is the fault or if the wiring or something else is at fault. I did have the high-end scanner hooked up and tried to operate the cruise buttons. And there was no reaction. So I want to work on that. And the HVAC system as well to cure that issue where it takes like 20 seconds to boot up and you can always hear the blend motors and that move inside so I need to take care of that. You want to disconnect, we can disconnect the negative batteries here. And by batteries, I mean that I have a dual battery setup. Batteries are disconnected, time to do some surgery. This should very carefully lift out and you want to be very careful on the wire. So now that I got this out and the three wires are out, one thing you do not want to do is to pull at these wires because you will damage the clock spring and then you're going to be in a world of hurt and have to replace that. So now that I got it disconnected, I'm going to carefully disconnect the wires, get that out of there. Okay, that one's out. This big one here. Little tab. So now that you have it out, you want to have a look at your wiring, see if it's damaged, because this wire can go bad. And it can be swapped out. It just plugs into the clock spring there. But you can see it's pretty pretty straightforward and simple. But considering that this side works, all the buttons work, except for the cruise, which doesn't mean anything. Logic is telling me that the cruise control switch is bad. We're going to find out. So now, unscrew it. Old switch comes out, place the new one in. Now the easy thing is, once you've had something apart, you already know how it goes, so then putting it back should be relatively pretty straightforward and simple. Plug that back in. Plug this one back in. And then these will snap back into place. We're gonna press the on off button. Should be 133. We're dead on. The cancel button should be 457. We're dead on. Set minus should be 2471. We're pretty close. Well, that kind of sucks according to the diagnostic test. The switch actually tests so fine, but there's no issues with any of the wheel sensors. There's no issues with that. But when I use my high end scanner and I try to power it on, it doesn't do anything. So I'm going to have to do some more digging. Could be the wiring harness in there. I don't know. But it's something I'm going to have to try to figure out. Not today, but at a later date. So this is where the magic comes in. There you go. I think I got it turned out enough. There we go. Now I need to try to pull that switch out. Just 
kind of like a tab on the bottom. There we go. So I do not know how this Alpine bezel is going to sit as far as reference with everything else. Like this is there we go. There we go. There we go. There. Can we get that up on? Just getting sidetracked here, but one of the things with this Alpine stereo is that this navigation button was always getting stuck. And if it got stuck, then you can't utilize any buttons on the unit itself. So it kind of defunct the whole unit and you always had to try to get a pick or something pried out. So what sprayed down with some WD-40 to loosen it up. I don't know if I got some pop or syrup or something in there, but uh, see if I can get it freed. You can hear the sander in the background. I put it back in, tested it, start to stick. So I just kind of gave the side of the button a brush. You can see it operates, but when you stick it back in, it sticks on the side. So maybe that'll give a little bit more clearance. I won't have to worry about that. Still stuck. So now we're good. I just trimmed the side of that back a little bit and that freed up the navigation button. Good to go. So now theoretically, this should just, uh, it's supposed to just snap out like such. Now we need to disconnect all the wiring. All right, I'm making good time here. Fix that button, HVAC's out, haven't got the cruise control figured out yet. Um, I found the connections so I can hook up a backup camera. Just about to swap out the HVAC. I'm way ahead of schedule on things I want to do, which is good because Fedora wants to come over tonight. And once I remove this and swap it out, they should get rid of the issue with the HVAC not having memory anymore. So the blend doors are always moving and it's slowly killing the battery. And like I said before, one of the ways that you could tell is that when you start your vehicle, this will flash for like 20 seconds and it may not flash it again. You know, if you turn off your vehicle and restart it, it may, but uh, once the vehicle's parked, you can hear all the doors move and it slowly drains the battery. And this was pretty expensive. This part was probably the most expensive part uh, that I bought for the Jeep so far to fix. This was closer to $400. Everything else I bought for the Jeep has been cheap. Now let's swap this out and get back to business. Getting this out was actually pretty easy. And then it's held in place by one, two, three, four screws. And this is the new one right here. It's very important that when you buy one, you use your serial number to get it because there's many that are gonna be close, but only, only one will work for your unit. So now, let's get all that out. And with this thing too, there's no HVAC codes or anything. So it's almost like it's a ghost in the system. So the revision hasn't changed any, except this one was made in 2013. The new one was made in 2018. That's pretty interesting. I'll get the new one, put it back in. And just double checking, everything's looking good. Line everything back up. There we are, snap back into place. Guess I'll see if the airbag is gonna go off in my face.
All right, got my big scanner here. I need to figure out <clears throat> why the cruise is not working. Press the brake. You can see everything works as it should. Brake switch works. The problem isn't the brake switch. The problem is that I can't even get the cruise control to even turn on. See the button that says cruise on? Press the button, nothing. So doing the self test, everything lights up. I was kind of looking if I could access the, there's a way I could access the buttons because sometimes <clears throat> There's a switch, or sometimes there's a module that allows you to see if you're pressing the buttons or not. I went through all the different modules in the system, and there's nothing for the steering wheel command center at all, which <clears throat> really kind of sucks. Be nice to know if I, I'm beginning to think that it might be in the clock spring, <clears throat> but I don't want to get the parts cannon out again. I need to find a way that I can be able to test and see what the heck is going on. Doms, you want to go inside? I just get a fire going. You don't want to enjoy the fire? No, you don't want any part of it. And are you watching the fire? Or are you? Or are you? You and your bald spot on your back, right? Get your needles. Yeah, yeah. Let's go. Let's go inside. Come on. Come on. Yeah, let's go. All right, motherfucker, beard time. Gonna crack open this Dutchies. Barrel aged sour ale. I've had for a while. <sniffs> Cheers, everybody. Uh, man, that's a good beer. That's a real good beer. I just want to say the Jeep JK project's moving along smoothly. The projects are getting ticked off one by one. Pretty soon I'll have this thing ready to rock and roll, head out on the trails. And be able to bring the TJ back in and finally finish off the TJ project. And then go back and forth between the Jeeps. Doing various different projects that will keep me busy for the next little while. I'm hoping that this JK will turn out to be pretty popular with the viewers. That's what my goal plan is. It's a little bit more up to date so to speak. Rather than the TJs getting kind of old. A lot of people are getting into the JKs now but... I want to thank everybody for watching. If you have any questions or comments, post them below. See you guys in the next one. Oh, yeah, you can hear that sizzle of cooking grease burning. Cooking grease is an excellent fire starter. Sure is.